hurt. Hello everyone and welcome to another video and episode number three of The Wintering, a series I'm working on at the moment that is just focusing on how we can build resilience over the winter when the days are shorter, the nights are darker, the weather's worse, etc, etc. It's harder to get up and get after it, but there is a lot of personal growth on the table for us as individuals and as athletes if we go and get after it nonetheless. So what this series is focusing on doing is covering how I'm approaching things with a few bits that you can focus on yourselves throughout and just documenting my training as it starts to get a little bit more wintry, basically. So if you haven't seen the first two episodes, do go back and do so as they're pretty sick from a very biased opinion, I must say so myself. But today is the night before the morning of a morning routine that I like to practice before my long runs. I've got a lot of questions on YouTube and Instagram over the past couple of months on how I prepare for longer runs in terms of routine, etc., etc. And I thought I'd cover that off today. The other question I get all the time is, Fergus, what watch do you wear? And I get asked it so many times, I'm just gonna box that off before we go any further as well. Garmin Phoenix 5X, I've got it refurbished off Amazon because it was cheaper that way. Buy the one that suits your needs and requirements. Anyway, today, is the night before. I'm gonna focus on running through what I do ahead of my morning routine because it really does begin the night before. Preparation is key. I'm gonna take you through that in a second and then I will take you through what I get up to tomorrow morning and a 30 to 40 kilometer run on my feet, aiming for around three to four hours at 140 to 150 beats per minute heart rate, sticking in a low intensity steady state. Before we go any further, I have a couple of things to request from you. First of all, put a date in your diaries as Gymshark's Black Friday sale is going live on Thursday the 18th of November at 7 p.m. Greenwich Mean Time. So up to 70% off selected lines, sick. Decent amount of stuff going on there as well. This is the Apex range, some of that's going on there. And items are not saved at checkout, so be conscious of that. And do please use my link in the description down below as it will do me a solid and I will be very pleased. Thank you very much. So other than that, only thing to say is if you do enjoy the video, make sure to drop it a like at some stage throughout. That's what it's there for. Number two, do please drop a comment with your thoughts and feelings as it keeps the YouTube gods happy and the algorithms ticking over. And number three, please do hit subscribe if you haven't already. And there are two very, very vicious dogs out there. I don't want to say they'll rough you up, but... That's what they told me if you don't subscribe. So I'd probably hit the subscribe button in the next three seconds, otherwise it's gonna get rough. Look at how dangerous he is. Pig, what do you say to people that don't subscribe? Exactly. Hi, are you gonna do damage to people that haven't yet subscribed? That was a nod, I'll take that. Handshake on it too? Thank you, thank you. Okay, so as I said, a morning routine really essentially starts the night before. What I've got laid out here is two by 500 milliliter soft flasks from Osprey with two scoops of carbs and electrolytes. That one probably needs a bit more of a clean upon reflection, but that's my problem, not yours. I'm definitely not gonna clean it before tomorrow as well, but let's pretend that I did and we will go from there. But here is this lovely clean one that I'm taking with me. I'll fill that with some water and then I've got about 400 calories worth of energy and sodium here, which will see me through most of the run. And I will take a few little more exciting snacks along the way, perhaps. So that's that. What I like to do that before as well is just get Rise by Human24 from the rather messy Human24 area of the kitchen. Get that out the night before. Get a bottle out the night before. I will have that there ready to come down. So I'm straight down through the kitchen. Get this mixed, sip that straight away. A little bit of caffeine, a little bit of electrolytes, some coconut water extract, etc. Basically the morning elixir of the gods and I found it's really good for my cognitive abilities on long runs as well. And then what I will do is I will have a cup of black coffee as that is an essential part of my morning routine for reasons that I'm not yet sure whether I'll show you on camera. Definitely not in detail, no. but let's just say, did you just gasp? Erin just gasped behind the camera. So if you haven't picked up on what I'm meaning yet, then you probably haven't had the issues that I've had over the years with making sure that you clear your bowels before long run. So black coffee is a great way of doing that, but I don't actually use too much coffee because the caffeine from Rise plus this means that I'd be 
jittery and all over the place if I did. So coffee, rise, all laid out and ready to go tomorrow. And that is that. From the kitchen to the next preparation station, write that one down. We are basically laying out stuff the night before, as I said in episode one of the wintering, as one of my sort of top tips on the move. But basically what I've got here is everything that I'm not gonna get dressed in in the morning. I've got my gloves by the door, I've got my Osprey Duro 6, I've got my head torch packed in there as well, which has got battery, that's good to know, I haven't checked that. Full beam, full beam. I have a couple of gels in here as well as an inhaler, which is as essential for me as breathing, that's a terrible example, is essential for me as water. I don't know why, I was obviously subconsciously thinking there, that was a mess. Nonetheless, I've got one and a half litres of water in a flask on my back as well, so what I like to do is mix water with the electrolytes and carbs just to keep my sort of flavour palette not blasted with sweet stuff. Then I've got my shoes ready to go. I've got socks and clothing and everything else upstairs, which I'll get when I come out of the bedroom. And then come down here so that this is all the last stuff that I need to grab before I head out. And then I'll talk you through how my run goes a little bit tomorrow. But that is as essential a part of my morning routine as anything else because it needs done the night before and saves me time and mental energy and running around the house trying to find things first thing. And if you're already apprehensive about going in the dark and the rain and the wind and you can't find something, it's very easy to convince yourself wasn't meant to be, I'll do it next time. Oh, I can't find it, can't go out. I've been there before, and this is the sort of thing that helps mitigate against that. So if you're the sort of person that's fallen into that trap, then this might be a good way of avoiding that. But onto preparation station number three. All right, so picture this scene. I've just exited the bedroom first thing in the morning and delicately closed the door because everyone's likely still asleep, and bam! I have some could be neater, not gonna lie, laid out clothing for tomorrow morning. So first up will be chamois creaming my nether regions. As that, you didn't need to go down, good lord. What I have here is some undershorts, which is a trick that I've learned from my rugby playing days. Basically just sort of lycra undershorts to go underneath your shorts, funnily enough, and that really, really helps with chafing if you are a gentleman of the larger variety and that is not a penis joke before anyone goes at me, but if you really want it to be, make the funniest one you can think of in the comments down below. Those are the Gymshark Element Base Layer shorts. I'm gonna be running in the Gymshark Element Base Layer top as well, because whilst this is very thin, when I start running in the, in the cold in this and actually get a bit of heat in it, it's really good at retaining it. And as I said in episode number one of the wintering, be bold, start cold, otherwise you're gonna be having a nightmare taking layers on and off, chucking it in your bag, and it can get really, really frustrating. Simple pair of Gymshark socks, just running these all the time. And I've got the Gymshark five inch speed shorts because there's no point in having thick thighs if you aren't showing them off to the world, am I right? Gents, then I've got a running cap just because it's lightweight, breathable and easy to use. And underneath all that, I will have my heart rate monitor. So as I've said, I'm gonna roll out of bed in the morning, get here, get dressed, and then I'm gonna head downstairs with everything I need pretty much ready to go. So all I really need to worry about is clearing my bowels, getting some food on board, getting my rise on board, getting a little bit of coffee on board, and making sure with some final checks that everything is ready to go. But I think what I'm gonna do now is have my dinner. Again, some carbs ahead of a long run is always wise. You don't need to go mental like they made you think you had to do in Run Fat by Run, if anyone's seen that film. I'm gonna get some food on board and I will see you tucked up in bed. Good evening. So every evening before bed, I aim to spend about 10 to 15 minutes reading just because it's a good way to sort of switch my head off and actually get to sleep quicker. At the moment, I am reading Effortless by Greg McKeown, McKeown, however you pronounce it. Anyway, this is a follow-up to Essentialism, which is a very popular book, but it's basically about how you can only focus on what's essential, prioritize, say no to more things, basically is the crux of it. And this is the follow-up on how you can make those things more effortless or passive, however you want to word it. But anyway... I've done my five to 10 to 15 minutes of reading for the evening, so I'm going to slowly unwind and go to sleep. Before I do, I will have a serving of Adapt by Human24, and for anyone that likes to get uncomfortable or doesn't like swallowing pills, get a load of this. For reference, this is basically a fantastic sleep supplement with every scientifically proven sleep beneficial element involved. Terribly worded, but you know what I mean. You can look up yourself, link in the description down below. Four pills, no water, At 
to be honest, that was as uncomfortable for me as it was for you. So that was uh, regrettable. But nonetheless, good night. Good morning all. So it's just coming up to 25 to 6 and I have myself 100 grams of Weetabix minis and some skim milk. Haven't really had cereal for a fair few years but we went to Costco the other day and went a little bit mad so on a bit of a cereal hype right now. Got a scoop of rice from Human24 mixed with about 350 milliliters of water which I'm going to get down me. Great way to get some hydration in before I crack on and a little bit of black coffee or at this stage really it's just there to get my bowels moving ahead of a run and I will not leave until that is done so basically if you are somebody that struggles with that I've actually had a few comments on previous videos about the challenges of that then just get up a little bit earlier so you give yourself a bit more time to clear things out before you head off as that is as essential a part of a long run as running is. So make sure to get that resolved, otherwise you are gonna have a pretty bad and potentially embarrassing time. Slept pretty well, feeling pretty solid, everything's laid out ready to go, so I'm just gonna sit here and sort of check any emails, get back to a few messages, etc., etc. whilst I get this down me. I'm gonna grab my stuff, drive into Edinburgh, park up at the space we've got, sort of just outside the city centre, and then head off to the Union Canal, with basically simple out and back, just going to go off heart rate today. Pacing is best guess. I'm going to try and hold the pacing for as long as I can, but then heart rate will be the principal guiding metric. This is obviously a little bit different to my evening and morning routine that would go around the work day, so do let me know in the comments down below if that's something that you are interested in seeing, as I can very happily do that for you, as it's still the same principles, habits, getting things ready the night before, making things as stress-free as possible because you're starting the day with an uncluttered and unstressed mind, which is setting you right up for a successful day. So, bear with me as I consume what is in front of me and I will catch up with you very shortly. All right, so we are good to go. Got my gloves, got my bags packed, soft flasks in there. Rise for the road. <coughs> we get. Okay, so I've just parked up. I'm using my phone torch to illuminate myself somewhat. Car has been showing four degrees Celsius, so it is rather chilly. I do have a mid layer over the top of my base layer now but i am considering taking that off to stick to my own advice and be bold and start cold but given that i'll be moving at 140 to 150 heart rate i might not actually warm up quite as much as i would expect but equally i don't want the additional weight and the hassle of taking my middle layer on and off so 
I'm going to go without it. I'm going to go without it. And if I'm cold, I'll just move a little bit quicker. But this is the challenge at this time of the year because layering is a challenge, etc. If you start to get heat under layers, then you can get too hot too soon. And it can get really, really frustrating and you're sort of like itching to get everything off. But then again, you don't want to be too cold, etc. etc. So I am going to crack on. It is two minutes to seven. Just parked up just outside of the city centre. And then I'm going to run up to the Union Canal and go out and back. I will see you one sunrise later in five, four, three, two, one. Well, 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 the Union Canal, we sadly meet again. So what I haven't actually mentioned yet is sort of my actual timings, generally speaking. So I'm normally in bed by 10, aiming to be asleep by half 10 latest. And then most days, training days included, I am up at five or six, depending on what I've got going on. But if I'm to bed later, then I'm not gonna be dogmatic about the time that I get up. I'm gonna try and bank that extra hour of sleep. So, a bit of context there. For reference, about 7K in, around 141 beats per minute heart rate. Feeling as solid as I would expect at this stage, but I have some sort of internal anxiousness developing given how many miles i've pounded on the tarmac over the years so for reference i've done a training run here from glasgow to edinburgh overnight which is 54 miles if you want to watch that old video look for this thumbnail here i have done a run from loch lomond through to Morrowfield, where i did the glasgow to edinburgh section and beyond again if you want to watch that video this thumbnail here I've also then, earlier this year, got dragged into a 12-hour ultra on next to no pro and did all of my training for that out here some, from sort of like January, February, March in 2021. So first video in that series is this one. The last video in that series is this one. So if you want to just see me suffer repeatedly on this path here, then you know where to go. See you shortly. Another important element of my morning routine that I haven't yet mentioned is that in the time I'm sitting, sort of having my breakfast, coffee, etc., I sit there and dwell on a topic that I'm going to think about while starting my run. So you might notice my ears are always headphoneless, and that is because I never ever do any training other than the gym with headphones. Because being outdoors, moving at a pace where motor pattern wise, I'm focusing enough on just those basic biomechanical patterns but not focusing so much that I can't think about things so I use this as an opportunity to A. reflect B. plan or C. just mull some thoughts over and it's important to go into a long run like this one with a bit of a mental strategy on how you're going to think about that so I've gone into today basically trying to map out the, uh, the rest of the year in terms of how I want to approach YouTube videos like this one, the narratives I want to put across, the training I think is more important than others to document, etc, etc, and I'm already having some good thoughts on it, so what I'll do when I get in is I'll just sit down and scribble them down on a piece of paper, and that means that this four hours today is the most uninterrupted opportunity I get each and every week to be able to think about those things, so that's pretty much it in terms of the routine side of things, so I'll just keep you up to date with the rest of the run from this point on really but sitting at 144 heart rate a little bit higher because i'm talking obviously but yeah feeling very solid all right so half marathon up in uh 157.52 i'm going to keep moving to the two hour mark and then turn around probably going to sink a gel at this point change over my let's fight some carbs in here got a spare one in the back and then see it through back to the start point really so we'll see you at the end. Je suis fini, and for those of you that are on Cultured Swines, that is French, but I am finished. 
and you should all subscribe. So, data on the screen for you just here, 40 kilometers in 349.43, average heart rate 148 beats per minute, average pace 545 per kilometer. And I know what you're thinking, I'm thinking the same. Fergus, why on God's green earth did you not push to a marathon? 2.2 kilometers to go, that doesn't seem like much, especially after already having done 40 kilometers. And the answer is, I was prescribed 40 kilometers, so 40 kilometers I shall do. Yes, I did have a bit of a battle with my ego, saying, why don't you just push on? Everything's feeling fine. But at 35 kilometers, my pace relative to heart rate massively dropped off. So that was a sign that any additional volume beyond what was prescribed would be diminishing returns in terms of adaptation versus fatigue for the rest of the training week. So you've got to be sensible with this sort of thing. Ego is very much the enemy in this case, and I stuck to 40 kilometers like a sensible chap. Anyway, that did mean that I had a two kilometer walk back to the car, which means that I've had a steak bake, a donut, and a coffee from Greg's en route. The northern bloke in me has shown his true colors, it seems. But I'm pleased with how that went. That all felt pretty solid, and I didn't really get too irritated with being on the Union Canal again. I think, all in all, that has given you a pretty good overview of what my routine around a long run looks like. If you have any questions, please do ask them in the comments down below. And if you would like to see what a morning routine around a workday looks like, please do let me know as well. Other things to flag at this stage is number one, the Gymshock sale, which I've already covered. Number two, I still have an enormous Movember giveaway going on on my Instagram. Look for this post here. I've linked it in the description for you down below as well. There is £1,000 up for grabs and £4,500 worth of kit, which is an extortionate amount of stuff to be able to win. So don't sleep on it. And you're raising money for a good cause as well. So why would you not get involved? It is a very simple equation, and I think you're all good enough at maths to determine that you should go and do that immediately. If you have enjoyed the video, do make sure that you've given it a like, that you've commented down below, and that you have already subscribed. That pretty much covers it off for the day. I do hope you've enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.